Here we go again. Manchester United part owners Ineos have ended a multi-million pound ambassadorial contract with Sir Alex Ferguson. The legendary Scottish 82 stepped down after 26 years at the helm in 2013, but penned an agreement which saw him become a global ambassador for the club soon after. It's emerged that the agreement, said to be worth in excess of two millions of pounds a year and in place since October 2013, has now been terminated by Ineos. Ferguson was told in a face-to-face -face meeting with Sir Jim Ratcliffe that the club were trying to reduce costs and that they were no longer in a position to continue paying him beyond this season. Sources have since indicated that the meeting was amicable and there is no issue between the club and Ferguson, who remains a non-executive director. Ratcliffe acquired a minority stake in his boyhood club back in December and has overseen a raft of off-field changes including a shake-up of the club's backroom structure and a number of redundancies after outlining plans to axe 250 members of staff. The club were the second-highest spenders among Premier League clubs in this summer's transfer market after committing more than 200 millions of pounds on transfers in a bid to reshape manager Eric Ten Hag's playing squad. Ratcliffe previously waxed lyrical about Ferguson, who is the most successful manager in the club's history after winning 38 trophies during his storied tenure at Old Trafford. Speaking back in February, Ratcliffe said, He was the first person I met when I went up there which I think was the second week of January, and I had a meeting from 9am to 10am at his house, and I left at 1pm. He never stopped, he's got a lot of experience, a lot of stories to tell, and a lot of thoughts about the club. I don't think he has been encouraged to get involved, but he is still very thoughtful about the club, and he has an immense amount of experience. He really understands the values and traditions of the club and what it's all about. He's still fiercely competitive, Alex Ferguson. Meanwhile, Manchester United is facing increasing injury problems, with manager Eric Ten Hag missing several key players. Mason Mount, Kabi Mainu, and Harry Maguire are out due to injuries. Luke Shaw will also be sidelined for another month after a setback in his recovery. Right-back Nusser Mazraoui recently had surgery after experiencing heart palpitations. While there were fears that his condition could be serious, updates suggest it's less severe. Mazraoui is expected to return in the next few weeks, providing hope for United's struggling defense. Morocco's national team coach, Walid Regragui, confirmed that Mazraoui's issue is minor and the player should be available for the November international break. Luke Shaw and Tyrell Malaysia are also nearing returns, adding to the defensive options. However, Harry Maguire's absence will stretch the squad further, increasing the pressure on Ten Hag during the coming weeks as the team navigates important fixtures. On the other side, whenever a Manchester United manager is on shaky ground, two legendary words pop up. Zinedine Zidane. The France and Real Madrid icon has been linked with United numerous times over the years, towards the end of Jose Mourinho's tenure, after Ola Gunnar Solskjaer got the chop, and now, albeit more loosely, with Eric Ten Hag clinging on to his job following a torrid start to the season. Whenever a job at an elite level club comes up, or is close to being available, Zidane's name is usually chucked into the frame. The closest he has come to joining United was following Solskjaer's dismissal, only for the World Cup and Euros winner to rule himself out. Reports in France suggest he is being lined up to replace Didier Deschamps as his nation's boss. Given Deschamps has won the World Cup as both a player and manager, appointing a figure of Zidane's standing would make sense. However, according to French outlet RMC, Deschamps isn't planning to step down soon as he is eager to avoid Zidane trampling over his legacy. Therefore, United may have a free shot at Zidane should Ten Hag be let go in the coming weeks. However, Zidane and his agent's previous remarks about United and English football in general suggest the finest player of his generation won't be setting foot in the home dugout at Old Trafford anytime soon. There was a window of opportunity in 2018 between Zidane's two spells at Real. However, his agent, Alain Migliaccio, warned at the time, I do not think that he will manage in England. It is much less his style. I have discussed it with him. It does not really attract him. Fast forward to 2021, and Zidane was again linked with United following Solskjaer's sacking, only for the man himself, 
who speaks limited English, to point out why it wasn't the job for him. Would I want to go to Manchester United? I understand English, but I'm not completely fluent in it, he told French outlet L'Equipe. I know that there are coaches who go to clubs without speaking the language, but I work in a different way. Many elements come into play in order to win. It is a global context. I know what I need to win. Unless Zidane has brushed up on his English, United may again have to look elsewhere, with Thomas Tuchel still in the club's thoughts, having held talks in the summer before Ten Hag was given a stay of execution. On the other hand, Manchester United has reportedly decided to let Brazilian winger Antony leave during the January transfer window. According to transfer expert Fabrizio Romano, the club is open to letting Antony go either on loan or through a permanent transfer. Several clubs have shown interest in signing the 23-year-old. Former club Ajax, Newcastle United, and Crystal Palace are said to be among the potential destinations for the winger. Antony has struggled to make a big impact at Old Trafford since his move in 2022, and this decision could provide a fresh start for the player elsewhere. As January approaches, it will be interesting to see where Antony ends up and how Manchester United plans to adjust its squad. Keep an eye on updates on this platform as this story develops. In other news, Manchester United's Manuel Ugarte is set for a bigger role under Eric Ten Hag, despite the manager facing pressure at Old Trafford. Signed for £42 million from PSG in the summer to fill the void left by Scott McTominay's departure, Ugarte has struggled to make an impact, starting just three games so far. Ten Hag, however, remains committed to giving the 23-year-old more minutes to help him adapt to the Premier League. Ugarte, who recently played a full game for Uruguay, is expected to get more opportunities in the coming weeks, as United look to improve their disappointing season start. Meanwhile, Manchester United is set to undergo a transfer revolution, after heavy spending in the previous decade did not lead to the desired success. After Sir Jim Ratcliffe made several new appointments at the club to lead the Ineos operation at Old Trafford, he expects to see new outcomes from a change in transfer policy. Despite speculation on Eric Ten Hag and Ineos's decision-making on the manager's job, the board are reportedly working on other changes at the club. This summer, the club made several purchases, but did not spend an excessive amount on one single player in the aim to strengthen the squad in multiple areas. An example of this policy was United's approach in chasing Everton defender Gerard Branthwaite, with Everton demanding 75 millions of pounds, and the Red Devils refused to match that asking price and signed Lenny Yoro and Matthijs De Ligt instead. In previous transfer windows, the club may have caved into the selling club's demands and potentially overpaid for their key target. Alongside the big investment in the first team, the Red Devils also made purchases for young talents. One talented young player who arrived was Cheeto Obi Martin, who sealed his move to Old Trafford last month. Journalist Fabrizio Romano has given an update on the latest changes Ratcliffe wants to implement at Old Trafford. Romano took to his official YouTube page to update the supporters on the recruitment policy at Manchester United. Speaking on United, Romano said, This summer we saw signings like Lenny Yoro, Joshua Zerxi, Manuel Ugarte, so United were very busy with signing important names, but also United started signing two special talents. One is Seku Kone, from Mali, a midfielder born in 2006, and the other one is Cheeto Obi Martin, who decided to leave the Academy of Arsenal to join Manchester United. Remember these two signings, not just them, because the indication I'm getting is that Ineos really want to build something for the future in terms of signing talents who are maybe not ready immediately for the first team. Cheeto Obi Martin will take time before we see Cheeto having his debut in a Manchester United shirt. The same for Seku Kone. Seku Kone is not ready yet, of course. But the potential is huge. The value in the deal is what made Manchester United decide, OK, let's go for this player. Man United in the past, before this new era with Sir Jim Ratcliffe, were missing on many opportunities with the scouting side, telling the board to sign the players, but Man United decided to go with a different investment. Moises Caicedo when he was a kid, and many others who had a chance to join Man United but ended up joining other clubs. With Ineos, this won't happen again. This is the message of the club. They want to sign talents with potential, like Cheeto Obi Martin, 
and Sekou Kohn, Manchester United is already working for more signings like this. In other news, Manchester United still have their sights on Crystal Palace star Ebereki Eze. Fabrizio Romano revealed on his YouTube channel that signing a winger of Eze's talent remains a top priority for Man United in the next transfer window. Man United want to invest in a winger in 2025. They have not decided who it's going to be, Romano explained before confirming. But for sure, Easy is one of the players they have been scouting. His release clause is in the region of 60 million, Romano added, before warning that doing business with Palace has often been far from straightforward. We know how complicated are the clauses at Crystal Palace every single time. We saw that with Michael Olise, but for sure, Easy will have a release clause, and the clause has an important detail. The main part of the payment has to be done up front, Romano revealed meaning that if United would like to move on easy, they will need to have their finances in check beforehand. Should United decide that easy is indeed worth signing, given his somewhat feasible 60 millions of pounds price tag, they may need to act fast in order to not miss out on this in-demand star. Liverpool and Tottenham Hotspur are among the other contenders for Easy's signature with both clubs reportedly still in the race for the Palace star. For United, signing a new, capable winger is of paramount importance. While Alejandro Garnacho and Ahmad Diallo are certainly rising stars at the club, more reinforcements will be needed as United navigate the Europa League, League Cup, and FA Cup in addition to the Premier League. While Marcus Rashford appears to have rediscovered his form, as seen by his performance at Porto, he has struggled to find consistency this season. In addition, Jadon Sancho's United career appears to be at an end as he continues his loan at Chelsea. While Antony appears to be headed for the exit door as well, with the club reportedly willing to allow him to depart in January. Should both Sancho and Antony's United careers be at an end, signing a major talent such as Eze could be critical in order for the club to cope with the heavy season ahead. Meanwhile, Manchester United inserted a 16 millions of pounds buyback clause into Alvaro Carreras's permanent move to Benfica, and Benfica are worried that the Red Devils will activate it, according to reports. United are reportedly considering making a huge transfer U-turn a mere five months after sanctioning Carreras' five millions of pounds move to the Portuguese giants. Given their struggles at left-back, United may well regret their decision to let him depart and could be tempted to trigger their buyback clause. The 21-year-old left United without making a competitive appearance, but has already established himself as a key player for his new club. Carreras has gone from strength to strength since moving to the Portuguese capital, making nine appearances in all competitions this season. He has started both of Benfica's Champions League games, including their 4-0 demolition of Atletico Madrid, where he kept Argentine World Cup winner Angel Correa and Frenchman Antoni Griezmann at bay. United will reportedly face competition for the left-back services from Barcelona, Real Madrid, and Liverpool, but the Spaniards' release clause for all other clubs, bar United, is set at around 41 millions of pounds, according to Portuguese outlet Record. Carrera spent the second half of last season with Benfica on loan, before making the move permanent in May. The Red Devils signed Carreras from Madrid in September 2020, pipping both Barca and Manchester City to his services. He was named on the bench for several Premier League games under Eric Ten Hag. The fullback was highly rated at the club, winning the Under-23's Player of the Season award in 2022, and United's defensive injury crisis could see them move back in for Carreras. Ten Hag's side have endured their worst-ever Premier League start, and left-back has been a problem position amid injuries to Luke Shaw and Tyrell Malaysia. Natural right-back Diogo Delot has started every game on the left-hand side of defense this term, but has endured some horror shows, particularly in United's 3-0 pummeling by Spurs. However, New fullback Nusser Mazraoui will be sidelined for a few weeks after undergoing a minor procedure after experiencing heart palpitations. The Red Devils have one fullback available for selection in Delote, 
or may have to call up 17-year-old Harry Amass for his first Premier League minutes. Harry Maguire has also been ruled out for a few weeks after pulling his calf against Aston Villa. On the other side, Manchester United is reportedly considering former Borussia Dortmund manager Eden Terzic as a potential replacement for Eric Ten Hag. Ten Hag has come under heavy pressure following the club's worst-ever start to a Premier League season, leaving them sitting 14th in the table. According to reports from The Sun, Terzic is one of the names on United's shortlist. The club's co-owner, Sir Jim Ratcliffe, spent seven hours last week in discussions with the club's executive committee in London, where possible changes were reportedly discussed. Terzic, 41, had a successful stint at Borussia Dortmund, leading them to the Champions League final last season, where they lost 2-0 to Real Madrid. Before resigning in June, he also came close to winning the Bundesliga title in the 2022-23 season, narrowly missing out to Bayern Munich on goal difference. Terzic's playing career was spent as a forward in the lower leagues of German football. After his playing days, he transitioned into coaching, working as a scout and assistant coach in Dortmund's youth academy under Jurgen Klopp. He later worked as an assistant coach at Besiktas and West Ham under Slaven Bilic and completed his coaching badges in England. Terzic also has connections with English football, having graduated from the FA's coaching course in 2018 alongside Graham Potter, former United players Nicky Butt and Nemanja Vidic. United's leadership is also said to be considering other names, including Thomas Tuchel, who has experience with top clubs like Chelsea. Ten Hag's current assistant, Ruud van Nistelrooy, is another option being looked at. Others linked to the role include England manager Gareth Southgate, Graham Potter, and former United players Michael Carrick and Kieran McKenna. So, as United face growing challenges on the pitch, the pressure on Eric Ten Hag continues to build, is now facing a tough situation. Injuries, poor performances, and tactical missteps have left the team struggling to find form, leading to growing frustration among fans and within the club's hierarchy. While Ten Hag still has his supporters, particularly due to his work last season in rebuilding the squad, the club's leadership appears to be preparing for the possibility of change. With the team languishing in mid-table, and the threat of missing out on European football next season, decisive action may be necessary to turn things around. If United were to move forward with a managerial change, they would likely look for someone who can bring stability, a clear vision, and strong leadership to a dressing room that has shown signs of tension in recent weeks. The choice of a new manager will be crucial, as United seeks to re-establish itself as a dominant force in both the Premier League and Europe. Eden Terzic, with his experience at a top club like Dortmund and his knowledge of both German and English football, could provide the fresh perspective United needs. His ability to develop young talent, coupled with his understanding of high-pressure environments, makes him an intriguing option for the Red Devils. Whether or not Terzic will ultimately be the man to lead Manchester United forward remains to be seen, but the fact that his name is being mentioned suggests the club is already looking ahead to what might come next. For now, all eyes are on Eric Ten Hag and how he responds to the mounting pressure, knowing that the club's future could depend on the next few weeks. As pressure mounts on Eric Ten Hag, United may be gearing up for big changes in their coaching setup, with several candidates under consideration to take over the job. On the other side, Manchester United face Brentford at Old Trafford seeking a much-needed win. Eric Ten Hag remains in charge despite recent struggles, with the team winless in five games and scoring in just one of their last five league matches. Injuries have been a problem, but several sidelined players may return for this crucial clash, giving Ten Hag hope to turn things around. Here's the latest update on the United injury situation. The first one is Nusser Mazraoui. His injury is corrective procedure. Nusser Mazraoui had to pull out from the Morocco squad this month after undergoing a minor precautionary corrective procedure due to palpitations. United anticipate his absence to last a few weeks. Morocco's head coach, Walid Regragui, has confirmed his optimism regarding Nusser Mazraoui's condition, stating, Nusser Mazraoui is not suffering from a dangerous illness. We hope he will be with us in the next camp in November. He expected to come back in November. Next one is Harry Maguire. He injured a foot. Harry Maguire is currently sidelined with a foot injury sustained against Villa. After being substituted for Matthijs de Ligt at Villa Park, 
Maguire took to Instagram on Tuesday to express his frustration and determination, saying, Frustrated to pick up an injury at the weekend will be a few weeks on the sidelines for me, but I'll come back stronger. He expected to come back in November. Next one is Lenny Yoro. He injured fractured metatarsal. Lenny Yoro, who suffered a fractured metatarsal during the club's preseason tour in the United States, is on the mend after surgery. The 18-year-old is reportedly already walking unaided and hitting the gym at Carrington. On Wednesday, Yoro provided an update on his recovery progress by posting a video on social media of himself working out on a treadmill, captioned, on the way back. He expected to come back in November. Next one is Luke Shaw. He injured a calf. Reports suggest a November comeback for Luke Shaw, who has been nursing a calf injury that ruled him out just days before Manchester United's season opener against Fulham. Despite initial hopes of a return last month, the England ace is still on the sidelines awaiting his season debut. However, manager Eric Ten Hag remains optimistic about Shaw's recovery, recently noting, We hope Luke Shaw can return after the international break quickly. He added with some caution, I don't know if it's the first game we're hoping for. I can't in this moment tell this 100% with security, but from now on, we have two and a half weeks to work to the point, but shortly definitely after he will be there. He expected to come back in this October after international break. Next one is Tyrell Malaysia. He injured a knee. Tyrell Malaysia's absence since the end of the 2022-23 season due to a knee issue continues although his rehabilitation is making steady strides. In August, Ten Hag provided a hopeful outlook for the defender. He is not that far off, but he is now in a progress situation. At a relatively short notice, he can again return into team training and then into team performance in games. I think it would be possible to be available again in two months, Ten Hag said. Malaysia has been spotted back on the Carrington turf, participating in training sessions, which confirms his recovery is progressing well. He expected to come back in this October after international break. In other news, Bruno Fernandes, Manchester United's captain, has recently come under fire after making comments about feeling more at ease and happier while playing for his national team, Portugal, compared to his time at Manchester United. During an interview, Fernandes expressed that he enjoys the food, language and atmosphere back in Portugal, and that he feels he can perform better there. These remarks have stirred up debate among football analysts and fans. Many have wondered if Fernandes was indirectly criticizing English cuisine or the current atmosphere in Manchester United's dressing room. Some pundits joked about England's lack of famous cuisine, with one saying, if England had the best food, we would know it by now. However, they acknowledged that his comments likely reflected deeper issues at Manchester United. Is Fernandez's honesty a problem? While some, like former footballer Frank LeBeuf, appreciated Fernandez's honesty, others believe his comments were poorly timed. The team is struggling, and as captain, his role is to support and motivate the squad, not highlight their problems while away on international duty. Critics argue that these comments could harm team morale, especially as they come from the captain, someone expected to lead by example. Pundit Ale Moreno raised the issue of modern communication, saying that Bruno should know his words would quickly reach Manchester United's dressing room. It's not ideal, Moreno said. As the captain, his job is to address these issues within the club not praise another team while the club is in turmoil. Other analysts pointed out that Bruno's teammates might feel disrespected by his remarks. Luis Garcia, another former player, emphasized that saying he feels better in Portugal might hurt his Manchester United teammates. If I were in that dressing room, I'd be waiting for him to explain who isn't good enough, Garcia stated. Is Fernandes the right captain? The debate also reignited the question of whether Fernandes is fit to captain Manchester United. Some argue that a captain should know when to hold back and protect the team. As football expert Steve Nicole pointed out, sometimes you just need to avoid answering a question, even if you're telling the truth. Being a captain is about leadership, and Fernandes should be more careful with his words. So, Bruno Fernandes's recent comments about his time with the Portuguese national team have stirred controversy raising questions about his leadership and the current atmosphere at Manchester United. While some appreciate his honesty, many believe he should have been more cautious with his words, as they could damage the team's unity. With Manchester United already facing challenges on the pitch, 
Fernandez's remarks add another layer of difficulty for the club.